what's good you guys it's the messenger of god here coming to drop one for y'all today and um today i'm gonna bring you the story of samson you know i have been working on this for like a few months now but you know god had you know had me to drop some videos before this you know that was really like personal and and he wanted me to to talk about the things i had to talk about just like the raven you know it was actually something that was personal that you know he showed me through that through that raven y'all and it's just like this a lot of people have that story where you that bird that was saying nevermore you know in that poem and it was just like it just think of so many victims and so many people that cried out that you know that the devil will not ever be able to 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 hurt you anymore you know i know a lot of you guys out there that has been going through stuff or has been you know hurt in a lot of different ways but you know what you have a friend in jesus christ and remember that that god will always you know get you through everything that it is that you're going through make sure that you have a relationship with him you know not so much of worrying about you know religion so much you know or or worried about how you know because it's a lot of schism you know separation and division you know when we just focus on you know religion everybody wants to try to put you in a box and separate you instead of bringing us all together you know because when you have that relationship with god it's your own personal things that you've been through through your lifetime that you're going to need to talk to him about by yourself you know a lot of people can't just bring you through and and go to the lord for you you know people can pray for you you can go and and try to get help and try to talk to people but y'all remember this you need that relationship with jesus christ in order to get through the things that you're going through okay now let's get into it uh samson it's judges chapter 13 through 16 i have a bunch of notes y'all my notes is so very 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 long i got like 14 pages of, of like notes y'all god had me on one okay and the thing is, I'm going to give it to you all today. But I want to read the story to y'all first, and then I'll give y'all my notes, okay? All right, let's go. Judges 13. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. You know, it makes me think about after, you know, Joshua had led them into the promised land. But, you know, they was they was being disobedient, y'all. But but let, let's go. Let's go. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Menorah. And his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. And I'm going to get into that barren, y'all. The, the barren, I think I talked about being barren at the end of my notes. You know, a lot of my notes, I didn't do them in order, but I did it in the way of where, wherever God was speaking to me at and, you know, in, in whatever frame he spoke to me in. And then the Lord helped me put together my notes. So I'm going to um, give it to y'all when I'm done with the story. All right, let's go. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee and... Do not drink, don't drink uh, wine nor strong drink or eat any unclean thing, okay? For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son and no razor shall come on his head for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband saying, a man of God came to me and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible, but I asked him not whence he was, neither told me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine, no strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Okay? Then Menorah entreated the Lord and said, Oh, my Lord, let the man of God, which thou did it, sin, come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened his voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came again unto the woman. 
as she sat in the field. But Menorah, her husband, was not with her. Okay? And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man has appeared unto me. Behold, the man has appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah rose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spaketh unto the woman? And he said, I am. You know that was God because you know he said, I am. You know, he all eat. Man, just listen. I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass how we ordered the child and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. You guys, oh my goodness. You guys got to know, this is the messenger. Uh, the messenger in this story right here, y'all. This angel is the, is the angel of the Lord. This is definitely God, y'all. Listen. Okay, let's keep on going. He told her not to have no strong drink, no eat anything, no unclean things. Okay, all that I commanded. Her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee, detain, <laughs> until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, though thou detain me, I will not eat any of thy bread. He said, I don't want none of y'all food. Okay, do y'all know who this is? This is this is God right here. He said, I, I, don't, I don't need to eat any of these things. I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. See, he didn't even know. Wow, ain't that something? A lot of times, y'all, a lot of times, y'all don't even know when God be talking to y'all. But y'all, y'all study, ignore him. You have to believe in God, okay, with all your heart, okay? You, you have to first believe. How are you going to be able to trust in God and understand or hear him if you don't believe? Okay, let's keep going. And Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, what is thy name? That when thy sins come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why askest, why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took the kid with a meat offering and offered it. Up on a rock unto the Lord, and the angel did wondrously. And Manoah, like he did miracles, y'all. And Manoah and his wife looked on, like they was looking at him why, all while he was doing this. For it came to pass, when the flame went up toward the heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame, y'all. He ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it. And fell on their faces to the ground. They was just like, they were so shocked and surprised, y'all, because they was looking at how this miracle and how this was going on right before them in their face, okay? And they fell to the ground, y'all, on their faces. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. See, now they know that it's God because they was just looking at how he ascended. It was just like, oh my goodness, look at this angel. Look at this spirit, how it just, it ascended right back up to heaven. Okay, look, let's keep going. But his wife said unto him, if the Lord was pleased, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would have not received the burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have shown us all these things, nor would as this time have told us such things as these. And the woman bear a son and called his name Samson, y'all. This is Samson. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. Wow. And the spirit of the Lord began to move him at, wait a minute. And the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zora and Estiol. And Estiol, look like Estiol, y'all. Okay, let me see what this is down here. Okay, and then it's gonna get into the it's gonna get into the marriage of Samson, and then uh, let me see. Then it's gonna get to the revenge of Samson, and then y'all uh, already know Samson and Delilah. 
Let's get it, let's get it, let's go. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her, get her for me to wife. Did he just tell his parents to, to just get him a wife? Like, y'all, y'all, y'all better go and get, go get her. You know, I'm just like, how he just talk to his parents like that, huh? Okay, go get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said to him, unto him, is there never a woman amongst the daughter of thy brethren or, or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, get her for me, for she pleases me well. He was just like, I don't, I don't, I don't want none of them women. I want this other woman here. And they were just like, you can't just marry like one of the, the, the you know, one of your peoples, one of your kind, you know, kind of people. And, and he was just like, no, you know, so let's keep going. All right. And Samson said unto his father, go get her for me. She pleases me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. You see that, y'all? For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared. Rawr! Okay, like, like little Simba. No, matter of fact, like Mufasa. Okay. He came in. Oh, no, a young lion. So it's like Simba, huh? A young lion roared against him, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent himself as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand, y'all. He just tore that lion apart, y'all. But he told not his father or mother what he has done. And he went down and talked to the woman and she pleased Samson well. She pleased Samson well. Hmm. Know what that means. She pleased Samson well. And after a time, he returned to take her and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, y'all. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and a honey in a carcass and a, and a honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hand and went on eating it, okay? He went on eating and came to his father and mother and then he gave them some, okay? And then they ate it. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the caucus of the lion. He didn't even tell them that he had done took this honey out of this dead lion, out of this caucus of the body of this lion, y'all, and went and gave them this honey. Isn't that something? So his father went down unto the woman and Samson made there a feast for so use for so used the young man to do and it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him and Samson said unto them I will now put forth a riddle unto you if you can certainly declare it <laughs> declare it me within the seven days of the feast he's like if you can figure this out in the seven days of the feast and find it out then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 chains of garments okay but if you can't figure it out then you shall give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. And they said unto him, put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. And he said unto them, out of the eater came forth meat and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle like they couldn't figure it out. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, entice thy husband, you know, try to get him to like, you know, to tell you, you know, what this riddle is so that way we won't lose everything because y'all got to remind yourself that these are her people, okay? So they like telling her like, I know you ain't going to turn on us. You're you going to have to get your husband to like, to tell you so he won't take our stuff, okay? And test him that he might declare us the riddle. These, we burn thee, see? So they threaten her, y'all. They threaten her if they, if she didn't entice if she didn't entice her um her husband, she didn't entice Samson that they was gonna burn her house down and her father. So look, she she was trying her best to do it. She had to tell him, right? She had to try to get him to tell her. These three burned down the house, burned the burn her down and the father's house with fire. Have you called us to take 
that we have? Is it not so? And Samson, Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou doest but hate me and loveth me not. Thou hast put forth the riddle unto the children of my people and has not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it even to my father or my mother. And and shall I tell it thee? Like, shall I tell it to you if I didn't tell my mom and my dad? And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lied sore upon him. She told the riddle to the children of her people. Ain't that something you all look? And the man of the city said unto him, on the seventh day before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, if ye had not plowed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. You see that? Ain't that something? He he told me, I know he was upset that she told. And the spirit of the, here it go. And the spirit of the Lord, verse 19, came upon him and he went down to Ascalon and slew 30 men. He slew 30 men of them and took their spoil and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, y'all. And he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Ain't that something? How you gonna sit up there and give his wife to his companion? They sat up there and gave his wife to, to his companion, y'all, to his friend. Okay? To someone he knows. Okay, here we go in chapter 15, y'all. Y'all hang with me. The revenge of Samson. But it came to pass within, after a while after, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid. And he said, I will go into my wife. I will go into my wife into the chamber. But her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hadst utterly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to thy companion. Like I gave it to I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister father fair? I mean, is not her younger sister fairer than she? He's saying, like, you know, you don't think her sister look look better, you know? Take her. I pray thee instead of her. And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless? Then the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes, John, and took fire bands and turned, <laughs> turned tail to tail. He put them tail to tail, y'all, and put a, and put a fire band in the midst of their two tails. He, he put a, he put like some fire in the midst of their uh, tail and tied them together, y'all, so they can run into this field and burn up all their stuff. So look, ain't that something? And when he had set the bands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burn up both the shocks and also the standing corn with the vineyards and olives. Then the Philistines says, who has done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to, to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. Wow, ain't that something you want? And Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter, and went down and dwelt in the top of the rock, Edom. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the man of Judah said, Why are ye come up against us? And they answered, to bind Samson, are, are we against us? Wait, wait, wait. To bind Samson, are we come up to do him as he has done us? Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock, Edom, and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? Question mark. What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto, him, unto them, as they done unto me, so I have done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hands of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. Like you, you ain't going to turn against me yourselves, okay? 
And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. We won't kill you. Okay? And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And when they came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Look, the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, upon Samson, y'all. And the cords that was wrapped around his arms, because I was thinking that too. I was like, if he that strong, can he break out of there? But do y'all realize that every time that he get ready to do something or he does something so powerful, it's always the spirit of the Lord that comes upon him, okay? He's not doing this by himself. The spirit of the Lord has to come upon him. Look, the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and the cords that was wrapped around his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire and his bands loosed, okay? Loosed off his hands. Ain't that something? And they and he found a new jawbone, y'all, a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, Y'all, with this job on, I saw something completely different. But wait till I get to my notes. I just want to get through through the story so that way I can tell y'all my notes, okay? Because I know some people, maybe that's out there, um, may want to hear the story of Samson. So I, I was there to read the whole thing today, okay? All right. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. Because see, a lot of times I think of the young people, you know, the young people that the ones that that needs the word of God, that 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 wants to know of, of Jesus and wish they had somebody to read it to them. You know, I think of the ones who who need the Lord, not just the people who already have God, but those that need him. You know, we we when we have the Lord, we, we should take the time to break down the word or at least read to the children you know, read to them and let them know things in this world. So that way, you know, not only they learn about the Lord, but how to carry themselves. Okay. No, know, know that the word applies to their life that they're living right now. So that way, you know, they can be able to, to take care of themselves. Okay. All right. Help your brother and sister, Joel. Let's go. <laughs> and Samson said with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men? That's a donkey, okay? And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Remeth Lehi. That means Remeth uh, Lehi, okay? And Remeth Lehi is the lifting up of the jawbone or casting away of the jawbone, okay? Because a lot of times we would look at it, but we don't see it in, watch y'all, I saw this in a whole nother way. So it's either, it's it's lifting it up, but it also can mean casting it away. So, so just, 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 just keep paying attention, keep paying attention. And he was sore a thirst. He was sore a thirst, you know, makes me think of that woman at that well. And called on the Lord and said, thou has given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? But God clave, not cleave, he clave or clave a hollow place that was in the jaw. Okay. That was in the jaw. Hold on. That was in the jaw. Lehi, because you know the the jaw, the jawbone was described as Lehi, the the name of the place. Okay, but but just just keep let's just keep going. I don't want to get you confused. I'll read my notes. But God claimed the hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again. His spirit came again, and he revived wherefore he called the name thereof in hakor okay which means the well of him that called or cried okay which is in lehi until this day and he judged israel in the days of the philistines 20 years okay 
he defended, okay? Now, Samson and Delilah, y'all. And this is the last chapter. Thank y'all for hanging with me. It's been 25 minutes. Let's keep on going, okay? I'll try to call the time out so you'll know or so I can remember where to tell y'all actually where my notes start. All right, let's go. Samson and Delilah. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot, okay? And went in unto her. And it was told that the Gazites saying samson is come hither so samson samson is is coming here okay and they compassed him in and lay wait for him all night in the gate of the city okay they was waiting for him and were quiet all the night saying in the morning when it is day we shall kill him okay and samson laid till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors off the gates of the city and the two posts Y'all, you know he had to been strong and went away with them. Okay, he just took the whole gates, <laughs> took the whole gates off the city. Okay, and took them with him. All right, and put them up on his shoulders and carried them up the top of the hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman. Okay, he done now he done ran to another woman, y'all. He just sold weak for the women, right? Look, he he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. Uh-oh, here we go. Delilah, y'all. Y'all got to be careful for that Delilah and that Delilah spirit, y'all. I'm telling you. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, entice him. Ain't that something? Every time you turn around, look, y'all, even with the other lady, you are. Ain't that something? How? Because to me, you, you can tell that is the that is the devil all the time. They always come up to to um, whoever the girl is, whoever the girl is. Okay, same same thing like they did Eve. Okay, this has been going on, y'all. Look at this. The devil came up to Delilah, and they telling they they keep telling the women to entice the man. You see this? Enti entice him using the women. Okay, so look entice him y'all that's what they told delilah to do okay and see where in his great strength lieth oh my goodness and by what means we may prevail against him there's like you need to find out his weakness so we can know how to beat him okay that we may bind him to afflict him and we will give the every one of us 1100 pieces of silver okay and Delilah said, it's like, we'll give you some money. We'll, we'll break you off some money if you just find out how we can defeat Samson. And Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou <laughs> mightiest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said to her, if they buy me with seven green widths that were never dried, then I shall be weak and be... As any other man, it's like, I'll be just like any other man if, if you do that. Now, there were men lying in the weight and abiding her in the chamber. And she said to them, look, she don't want to snitch. She don't went down here, y'all, to snitch, to go tell them. Because he just told her anything, okay? He just told her that, you know, I don't even know if he told her just to see what she was going to say. But ain't that something how he did not even pick that up? That she went and after he told her that, that she went down there to go tell them and they came back to do that, what he told her. I would have been like, man, I can't even trust her no way because that that I done told her, she done went and told them so they can come and do it. I'm like, how many times did she have to do that for him to realize that she was betraying him? But, but, but come on, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now, there were men lying in the way, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said to him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. <laughs> That's foul. And he break the wisp as a thread of tow is broken when it touches the fire. So his strength was not known. Oh. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, that means like that was never, that has not been used, then I shall be weak and be as any other man, okay? He's like, I'll be weak if you if you do. If you try to tie me up with some brand new ropes then, you know, that nobody ever used, then, you know, I'll be weak as any other man. Like, I ain't gonna be able to get out of it. So look, Delilah, therefore, verse 12, 
took new ropes. I'm in chapter 16, verse number 12. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Look, look how she just is trifling, y'all. And there were liars in wait, abiding in the chamber. And he break them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitero, or <laughs> wait, Hitero, or Hitero, meaning like, um, thou hast mocked me. Like she's, she's so upset at him. She's like, how are you going to just tell me something like this? Like, you keep on telling me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web, it's just like her, like, you know how they be used to sew like the little blankets or the little stuff together back in the day, that little thread thing that they used, like talking about if she would weave his hair together with the, some thread. Ain't that something like a web? And she fastened it with the pen and said unto him, The Philistines be up on thee, Samson. And he awakened out of his sleep and went away with the pen of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, How canest thou say, I love thee, when thy heart is not with me? Like she sitting up there and said, How can you sit up here and say you love me? And you sit up here lying to me. That has mocked me these three times and has not told me where... Where in thy greatest strength lie. Like, she's just mad because um, he ain't telling her, like, where his strength coming from, okay? Verse 16. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. That he went on and told her, y'all, that he told her all his heart, verse 17, and said unto her, there has not come a razor. See, because remember in the beginning, God had told his parents that there should not never be a razor to come up on his head, that he shouldn't cut his hair. Okay. A lot of times y'all got to know that too. You know, it's so many things that people change in this world. Okay. That shouldn't have even been changed because a lot of us even cut our, our man's hair, you know, thinking that it's making him look feminine or cutting a man's hair or thinking that, that it makes them look like girly or something like that. When that's their strength, that's their power. You see what I'm saying? I wouldn't cut, I know if I had a son, I wouldn't be cutting his hair off, honey. He would keep all of his hair. You see what I'm saying? Don't don't cut off your little baby's hair. You see what I'm saying? Let, let your son, you know, you can do some styles with his hair or something like that. It's just that how people done train the minds and the eyes and just, just, just done change everything and making y'all see everything different. Because everything God made is good, you know? It, 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 it's just like when a man has hair, it's just like that's his masculinity. You know, I can understand the haircuts and, and, and sometimes, you know, different things may happen later on as you get older or whatever. And you might want to cut your hair and do all this stuff like that or whatever. I know times have changed, but therefore it, it, it shouldn't be nothing wrong with a, a man having hair, you know, I, that, as far as I say, you know, as far as I know, my opinion. Okay. Anyhow, there has not come a razor up on my head for I have been a Nazarite unto God. Remind you, a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. You see how he just told her all of that? And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, like she knew he said this from the heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines saying, come up this once for he has shown me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand oh my goodness y'all they done paid her off look at that she done took the bag and she made him sleep up on her knees just made him sleep up on her knees just got him laying in her little lap and she called for a man and she calls him to shave off the seven locks of his head y'all oh my goodness and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him and she said the philistines be up on thee samson and he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not. Y'all, he wasn't even able to do it. He wasn't able to, to shake himself free. And he wished not that the Lord, he didn't even know that the Lord was departed from him. Oh, ain't that sad. But the Philistines took him 
and put out his eyes, y'all. They gouged his eyes out, y'all. They put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters, okay? Fetters of brass. That's just like uh, shackles, y'all. That's just like like be him having shackles on his feet, you know. All right. And he did grind. And he did grind in the prison house. Oh, my goodness, y'all. How be it the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven, y'all. And the title of, of my uh, word today is called The New Growth. Okay, the new growth, because it was all about when his hair was shaven, but it began to grow again. And that's where it came from about his hair growing again, y'all. So when I read this, I started to feel the Holy Spirit, and I knew it was all because of the new growth. But let's keep going. I'm almost done with the story. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon. Dagon is their... Uh, their false idol god, y'all. This is the false idol god. I believe he is the king or the father of Baal. I believe Dagon Dagon is the father of, 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 of Baal. You know, they're both idols though. Okay. These are the false gods, false idols that they worship. Dagon, their god, and to rejoice, for they said, Our God has delivered Samson our enemy into our hand. Ain't that something if they're celebrating, you know, that they're so happy that, you know, basically saying that, that, that they were able to get their destroyer, you know, the, the, the one who came to, the, to destroy them, devour them. And when the people saw him, they praised their God for they said, our God has delivered into our hands, our enemy and the destroyer of our country, see, which slew many of us. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they said, call for Samson, that he may make us a, make us sport. Ain't that something? Call that that he may make us sport, like like for them to just mess around with and just do stuff too, you know, torture. And they call for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. That is so messed up, you all, before them, okay? And they set him between the pillars, okay? And Samson said unto the, the lad, that held him by the hand, suffer me that I may fill the pillars whereupon the house st standeth, that I may lean upon them. Oh my goodness, y'all. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and they were up on the roof. They up on the roof. And 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made a sport. Okay, I'm almost done, y'all. Okay, let's go. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee. Only only this once, y'all, I told y'all. Man, it's like I almost can feel this because I remember this when it was just like, when I had like, it's just like this. You, you always have to like encounter like the almost near-death experience. You know what I'm saying? To really understand, you know, when God comes up on you, like when you be for real, it's just like you will almost be like near death or you be done went through something so tragic to you be like, you know, oh Lord, if you can just get me out of this, if you can just get me through this, if you can just, you know, take this from me, Lord, please, Lord, I, I, you get on your knees, you start begging, you start praying like, Lord, please, Lord, you know, whether it's like somebody you love, you care about or something you're going through, you know, you have made it to this point in your life to where you call upon God. And when you do that, remember, remember when you call upon him, you have to believe and it has to come from your heart. There's not a specific uh, way that you have to pray. Okay. But you know, to call upon his name and tell him, talk to him just like this, tell him exactly what you need, exactly what you want, baby, when you're going through it. Okay. All right. I pray thee, oh God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold, because remember, they took his eyes out, y'all, of his two eyes. And Samson took a hold of the two middle pillars, which the house stood, and on which it was born. Because remind y'all, they put him out there in front of all these people and, and, and making fun of him and exploiting him by torturing him, okay? Okay, on which it was 
born up of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. Is it bold or bow? Okay, bowed himself with all his might. Okay, and the house fell upon the lords and upon the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Okay, in all his life, y'all. Then his brethren in all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zara and Estriel in the burying place of Manoah, his father, and he judged Israel 20 years. Wow, may the Lord have a blessing in reading and hearing of his word. Y'all wanted to read that story to y'all about Samson. My goodness, y'all. Man, let's get into the notes, okay? Let's get into the word right quick and some more of the word, okay? So this is what I got out of it. And I'm, it's going, now it's going to be everywhere. I had a whole bunch of scriptures I had um, a whole lot of scriptures, y'all, in my notes that I was just, you know, led to. And I, I wanted to, I wanted to tell y'all everything that God gave me, okay? So I titled this New Growth, y'all, because personally, my own experience, okay, is what brought me here. You know, I told y'all uh, part of the story of my very own hair story that I had an experience with, you know, that I had dealt with. And I believe I put some of it inside of uh, of my notes too. All right, but um, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get started because it's it's about the new growth, y'all. You gotta understand that where your strength come from. You know, even when you think that you're at your lowest, you know, you gotta see how things can begin to grow. How God can make something that that's so dead come alive. Okay, let's go. Samson means son or son child. Samson was a gift from God, a Nazarite, okay? He was dedicated back to God from birth, which brings me uh, to Psalms. I love Psalms, y'all. A spoken word, poetry. It's, it's poetry, y'all. And, and you know what? I, I, I write poetry, y'all. That's how God met with me, y'all, in the wilderness, okay? I was in the wilderness when I was going through all of this, okay? And the Lord spoke to me through my poetry, because I'm a writer and I love to write. So the Lord came to me through spoken word. Okay, let's go. That's why I always say some of the times in my songs, I'm not a rapper, but you know, I'm a, I'm a poet. So therefore the words of the Lord came to me through poetry. Okay, so, so let's get it. Let's go. Poetry is how I met the Lord in the wilderness going through the dark times of my life. All right. Which brought me to Psalms 84 and 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Psalms 119 and 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God knows our hearts no matter what we go through, y'all. He will not leave you, okay? So I'm sorry if I don't look up all the time, but y'all, I'm going to read y'all my notes because it's long, okay? Let's go. He will not leave you, which also brings me to 1 Kings 8, 38 through 39. What prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people, Israel, okay? Which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands toward the house. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou even thou only knowest the hearts of all the children of men. You see, God shows how he holds the keys to life, the birth and the death, life and eternal life, okay? Me and my mom was going over this word and God gave me, God gave me what she was saying to me, okay? And when she had told me what she said, I tried to write it down because she said, God gives us the word and you can't speak it unless you have it. And I said, thank you, Jesus, because that's right. It's like this. You can't just sit up there and just think, 
you know, it's, it's, it's just like something cool to do. It's not a hobby. It's not a sport. You know, you got to have the, 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 the understanding of God. You got to have that connection with God so you can connect with his Holy Spirit. So that way he can use you to speak what he wants to speak. So you can speak by his will, not your will, but let his will be done. Okay. You serving a purpose for him. You are the servant. Okay. You are, when he gives it to you, that's how you serve. Okay. You have to, you have to let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. Okay. This is not just something that you can pick to do or, or make it a hobby or, or say, you know what? I want to be this. I want to be that. It, that's not the way it goes. Okay. God has to choose you. Okay. God has to choose you. Make sure that you choose him so that way he can use you. Okay. Look, you have to talk to God for every word you speak, because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay, John 1 and 1, God spoke and brought everything to life. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14 and 6. Matthew 18 and 20 says, For where there are two or three gathered together in my name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Then I went to Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 11. Two are better than one. Y'all, all of this, the new growth, all of this brought me here. I kept seeing all of these things in my vision and everything that God took me, God took me to and where he took me around. I just kept writing it down, y'all. And then he helped me piece it together like a puzzle to where everything he gave me, all the scriptures he gave me, I wrote them down and wrote it together, y'all. And it came out like this. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 11 says, two are better than one. Y'all remember that two by two? And where there's two or three, y'all look, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if, verse 10, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another to help him, to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Okay. Luke 4, verse 8 and 12, I believe. <clears throat> and Jesus answered him saying, it is written. You guys, it is written. It's already done already, y'all. Only thing that we do, we are like the confirmation, y'all. We're this one big wave. And every time we hear this word of God, y'all, it's just like his word just going around across the land, y'all. I'm telling you just like this. When you know you're getting close to God, I try to tell y'all this a lot of times. When you know that you're getting closer and closer and closer to heaven, y'all, you will hear his word echo. Okay. And when I say echo, I'm telling you every time when you speak, you might hear it somewhere. You might hear somebody preaching it before or after you, you might hear a word that comes on the TV, the radio or whatever you listen to. It might be said right before you say it. Okay. You will hear the word echoes of the Lord in it. And it's just like all around you. Okay. It's just like when God wants you to say something, you can't get out of it. Okay. He's not going to leave you alone. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like this. Whenever God gives you the word or if you even ever heard of the word of God, it will never leave you. That's one thing that I know about the Lord. He never leaves you. Okay. The only way that God can leave you is if you leave him. Okay. God will never leave you. Anything that your parents or anybody have ever told you about the Lord or anytime you heard about the Lord coming up or anytime in your life, I promise you, you never forgot about it. You never forgot it. No matter what you've been through, okay? No matter what anybody has ever done to you, you have never forgotten the word of God. Trust me. All right, let's go. And Jesus answered, it was Luke 4, right? Chapter 4, 4, 8, and 12. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So the devil tried to tempt Jesus. Like, how you going to tempt Jesus with anything <laughs> when he created everything okay he has like all power right and jesus answered and said unto him get thee behind me satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shalt thou speak 
<laughs> Let's jump down to verse 12, okay? And it says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And would you look at that? In verse 13, it says, and when the devil had ended all temptation, he departed. Okay, he departed from him for a season. And you got to remember that part. The key is season, okay? But that that's why we thank God for having all the keys, okay? For him having dominion over the enemy. Because remind yourself, it's only for a season, okay? So sometimes you, you got to understand this too. Don't just give up. Because sometimes you think when one thing is done, that is over with. But you got to remember, y'all, Satan is here, okay? You're going to be forever tempted. Things are going to always go on as long as you live your whole entire life, baby. And that's why you have Jesus Christ to get through it. So it's only for a season. Sometimes you may deal with this. And sometimes, you know, it may be a season where you're being blessed. And then sometimes it may be a season you go right back to, into going through it. But always remind yourself, that's why you got to keep praying. You got to keep God in your heart, baby. You got to keep on giving the mercy and, 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 and your grace to God. And be humble about whatever it is that you do and whatever it is that you get. Okay? The devil has no power. And you have to know that and plead that. Okay? The power is when you have the faith to speak it out of your mouth. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Okay. Isaiah 43 and 2 says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they, they shall not overflow thee. Okay. When thou walkest through the fire. What's good, you guys? So I'm doing part two right now. And remind you, this is the new growth. And this is the part where I was on my notes. And I just read about Isaiah 43 and 2. Then I'm going to move on to, this message brought me to the song I heard my mom sing. And it was called, Oh, I Want to See Him. And I just had wanted to tell you guys the lyrics of the song, right? All right. So, Oh, I Want to See Him and Look Upon His Face, Dare to Sing Forever of His Saving Grace. On the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all pass home at last ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him. He will give me light. Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead, leaves water be tied. When in the valleys low, I look toward the mountain's height, and behold, my Savior's there, leading in a fight. With a tender hand outstretched towards the valley low, guiding me, I can see as I onward go. When before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark. He doors safely keep, and he leads me gently on through this word below. He's a real friend to me. Oh, I love him so. See, ain't it something how we want to see him, but don't even know how to identify him or his spirit, his grace, his mercy, or his understanding? Do you not see what he has already done? Okay. You have to have a relationship with God. The relationship you have is in the vulnerability of humility to walk in his image, in the flesh, to see the spirit in our mortal bodies. Okay. We have to die to flesh to see this. See, Samson came in this world with a gift, but did not acknowledge he was in control of it. Okay? Y'all, do you understand that? This is part of your identity. We are going to get into the story and about the hair because God took me there as a survivor, y'all. I am a survivor. This also deals with, look, this also deals with gender. But let me help you to see past all of this to see only the spirit of God to that. Well, for you to understand, it's the spirit of God that keeps you. OK, because see, a lot of times you don't understand, y'all. We always look at gender, but is spirit a gender. No. OK, so let's let's keep on going. All right. What describes the here? 
just to think of Samson. I saw Jesus, but I saw me like the mirror. Okay. Think how many people do you have to become before you became who you were? See, you have to see how you were not just a victim, but an overcomer, a conqueror. I speak truth over evil. See, many don't talk about overcoming witchcraft, hate, jealousy, envy, bring uh, or being the black sheep that turn as white as snow because you saw yourself approved by Jesus Christ to be set apart, to be a witness of his word and his power to be set free in spirit and in truth. If I took on the story of Samson and saw me, I was torn between the two, good and evil. See, I was torn between the two, y'all, good and evil from birth into this world of sin. But God has his hands on me. God protected me and he protected my heart. Okay, y'all wait till I get to the story of Rapunzel. Okay, watch this. He placed that honeycomb, that queen bee, y'all. Okay, the place called home, the temple around the heart that was in the carcass of that dead body of that lion, y'all, out of something that was dead was something sweet. <laughs> like the sweet smelling savior, he protected me until I was born again. See, I couldn't see it at all, what was in front of me. This life I had to, this, this life I had to work my way through it. See, my mother had me, but she gave me back to God. And after I got that honey, I came back and gave some to my mother, which was like the wisdom, y'all, which is the wisdom, which is the word, because she raised me with the Lord. And now I can turn around and give it to her in her blessed years. Yet I was still broken of what I lost until I saw my new growth. My second chance when I found out where my strength came from and called on the name of Jesus Christ, I was set free, free indeed, born again to serve a purpose. For the Lord until until while well, well, until he uses me in his will and purpose to bring it all down, to speak his truth and reveal his mercy and his power till he takes matter, until he takes matter a fact, until he carries me home, until he takes me, I say matter of fact, until he carried me home. But then I was brought to the story of this fairy tale y'all the fairy tale of rapunzel y'all which was renamed into tangle okay i looked up tangle y'all wait y'all before i tell you guys this wait i looked up tangle before that i saw the mix okay and i saw the mixed identity in this story as well tangle which means twisted together and matted but then i saw confused in a bind, no way out. She was put away and kept away. Y'all, before I do that, let me tell y'all what I saw in this movie, y'all. When I saw this movie, Rapunzel. I'm going to tell y'all just the beginning of the movie when it first comes on. Y'all got to go see that. It's Rapunzel. It's called Tangled now. I think it's on Disney. It's on, it's on one of them um, uh, uh, cartoon things where y'all can um, go look it up or see it, okay? It's called Tangled, okay? Rapunzel, Tangled. Okay, so in the beginning of this movie, y'all, it says, in the beginning speaks of a single drop of sunlight that fell from heavens. Okay, that fell from the heavens. And from this small drop of sun grew a magic golden flower that had the ability to heal, to heal and the injured, to heal the sick and the injured. Okay, but then this old woman, y'all, named Mother Gothel, tried she tried to hide the flower, y'all. She tried to hide this flower, okay? This 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 flower that was here, okay? She tried to hide the flower and the son's gift instead of sharing it, okay? She hoarded it. She hoarded the healing power and she tried to keep it for herself so that way she can look young, so she can stay young for a hundred years, okay? And she had to do, and all she had to do was sing a special song to it, y'all. So she was singing to this flower and every time she would sing to it, you know, it would give her like power and strength and she would go young again. So she was like this real, real old, old lady. But then when she sang to it, you know, the flower would give her strength and she would be young again. OK, but there was a sick queen. OK, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but I'm going to tell you all, you know, part of it. There was a sick queen. OK, that was laying there in a bed and um, that was of this beautiful castle. OK, and um, but yet they couldn't find this flower that they was looking for until one day, like the um the um old lady 
she knocked over like the little bush or whatever that she had that was covering over the flower right and and those the 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 guys that was from the castle i said like that the guys that was from the knights and stuff that was from the castle they came and they found that flower to take it back to the queen anyway and see after they gave it to her she was healed okay she was healed by the flower she had a a healthy baby girl and named her rapunzel so y'all rapunzel is the queen i mean rapunzel is the uh the princess that the queen had okay she named her Rapunzel. She had beautiful golden hair. She had beautiful hair. Okay. Everything was perfect until the witch. I call her the witch. Mother Gato came in and started singing this song again, y'all. That little flower song she be singing and cut that baby's hair. Okay. She cut little Rapunzel's hair and it died in her hands. Okay. It started turning brown and, and, and stuff like that and it died. And she turned back to the old lady, y'all. Like she was cursed, y'all. She turned back to this old lady. So then, guess what she did? She she stole little Rapunzel, y'all. She stole that little baby. She took that little baby from the castle because she was just like this. You know what? Um, her golden hair it it was like part of that flower and, and stuff like that. So it was like she was trying to. She thought if she had cut her hair because it was glowing and stuff like that. She thought if she cut that baby's hair, it'd turn her back young. So she cut out the hair, but it just died. So she's like, you know what? I'm going to steal Rapunzel and I'm going to raise her for myself, okay? And she turned back to the old lady. She stole the baby and she hid her into this hidden to this um hidden tower, y'all. She took it to this tower and hid her, hid her there, okay? And raised her as her own. So she kept the little baby hidden and all she knew was her. All the baby knew was her, but the baby did not belong to her, okay? The baby wanted to go outside, but she told her that the outside world was full of horrible people and it's a dangerous place okay and it's a dangerous place to be okay and let me see what else i got okay while her hair grew so long she did everything with her okay with her hair y'all she she was taking her hair in the movie and she would do this a whole bunch of stuff with her hair and stuff like that but y'all gotta go see it but you have to watch the movie so this story brought me to not just a vision I had, but maybe a year ago, y'all, if y'all remember, y'all been watching my videos, those who support me, y'all remember that vision that I had, that I was walking along and I saw like, um, this, this man, like a, a little old man and, and he was, uh, growling over there on the side. And yet I was looking, I was just like, um, but he didn't scare me, but, but he looked like he was dead, but he wasn't dead, but he was this old man. He was laying over there. And I remember that these guys were trying to walk me and I'm like, I already seen him before. I'm like, he doesn't scare me or whatever and then i saw this tree that was laid over you know like this and it had like this black veil hanging over it y'all this black veil hanging over this bush of this tree and it was it was turned over or, the, or whatever and stuff like that so i saw that and it was hung over and it was black uh, but it was like a veil a black veil that was over it i said wow anyway i remember my mom had told me when i was a baby they would always try to take try to take me from her okay because they wanted to take me from her because they were talking about I was too light. I was too light to be her baby because um, when I came into this world, I was like, my skin was like really, really, really white. And um, it was it was like what they were trying to tell her, though. They was like, she has like yellow giants. They were trying to tell her I had yellow giants or whatever like that. So they try to put these patches over my eyes and try to burn my skin and try to make me darker than what I appear to be. But anyways, long story short, y'all go watch that movie, Ponzo, because I, man, I'm telling you. So anyways back to my notes she was put away and kept away from the world until god set her free i'm gonna say that thinking of me she was kept a prisoner at the top of a high tower y'all i said look at what it took for her to be in the position she was in as a princess but stripped from her identity not knowing who she was yet because she was hidden away from the world tangled she have, I said, she have to, I said, well, she had the hair and the beauty, but she had to have the strength to get through what she's going through only to find out who she truly is. Then I remember the scripture my mom said, when I thought of the high tower, I was, I was in like, y'all, I was in this one place, y'all, I'm telling you. And, and when my mom had said that she had reminded me of this scripture, and this part of this tower brought me to Habakkuk chapter 2. And it was called God's Watchtower. And it was like I said, I I wrote down the scripture and I said, um, 
anyways, this, the scripture said, I will stand up on my watch and set me up on the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Woe to him that covet an evil covetous to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Then to end the story, in the end, with this scripture. Ain't that something? Nahum, look, one and seven, the wrath of God. And verse seven says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof. And darkness shall pursue his enemies. What do ye imagine against the Lord? This is verse 9. He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. See, almost at the end, she cried a tear from heaven that touched his heart, y'all. This was in the movie Rapunzel. You see, it wasn't the hair that had the power. It was the new growth, okay? The new growth had the glory of who she was from the heart. That strength came from the call, the wisdom within the heart, hope, the, the wisdom within the heart, hope that was brought back to her family as a gift. Okay, so y'all, when I, at the end of that movie, y'all see her when she cried that little tear over her little man. But y'all got to see it. I don't want to tell the movie. You got to go and see Rapunzel the Tangle yourself. Okay, it is not that you don't forgive or forget. It's now you are aware in the midst of sin. And now you know where your power comes from in order for you to conquer what you are dealing with in the flesh. See, you had to become dead in the flesh to rise in the spirit, to walk in the spirit, spiritually see in the spirit, speak in and through the spirit for you to be able to transform into your new body. You are one of the cubits that helps build the body of Christ. Okay, for example, when you realize you are not walking in the flesh, but you are walking in the spirit, which means you are no longer addressing a person, but a spirit. You are going head to head and fighting with the enemy that lies beneath. How, how many of y'all seen that movie? Y'all remember that movie, What Lies Beneath? Yes, for instance, you are paralyzed and stuck in that body until God moves you. Y'all go see what lies beneath with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer in it, okay? That's an old school movie, but that's one of my movies too. I'm, I'm kind of old school too, y'all. So anyways, you are moving beyond. Okay, I said, for instance, you are paralyzed and stuck in that body until God moves you. You are moving beyond life. And the enemy knows that you can see him and all his imps and legions. In all his ways and temptations and attempts, he tries so hard to hop bodies to get close to you that it's not only strangers, friends, co-workers, so-called saints, but even your own family you are. Ain't that something? He wants to touch you so bad, but he can't because God has your soul. He can't touch you to save his life, <laughs> knowing we are moving in the will of God, okay? We are in his will. We are in his purpose. We are in his purpose to conquer the so-called devourer, right? 
See, I'm not looking at the Bible and the people. Because, y'all, I, I wish I can I can read it the way I first got it. Because when I had it, I was writing it, but I was, I was so in the spirit. And now it just sounds like I'm reading it. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. But I be I be wanting to jump over this moon, y'all. Because when I first got it, I was boohooing. My page was have tears all over everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I was just tearing up, y'all. I'm telling you, I was, I, sometimes I be writing my the word down. I be writing in the dark and everything, y'all. But but here it is right here. All right, let's get it. See, I'm not looking at the Bible and the people in it as a gender. I see God, and if I repeat some of this stuff, it, it's because I just kept writing and God helped me put it together just like this. So keep on listening. See, I'm not looking at the Bible and the people in it as a gender. Okay, now, now look, I see God in his word. I see what is spiritually speaking and spiritually Y'all look, I see it spiritually, how it speaks and how it proclaims, okay? The Bible was made flesh, spoken into words to become in existence, to form a spiritual presence and a body. We must speak his word because it's God's breath in unison to build the body of Christ. That's why, why are we arguing with each other? When we all hold those pieces to that puzzle, dog, we all hold that part of that body. Every one of us live different lives. So therefore, when you tell your, your testimony of how God brought you out, you're going to tell your testimony of what happened in your life and how God brought you out to be a part of his body. So therefore, you can tell the sins that he died for and how you got through what you got through. But you're going to help. You're going to help somebody else with your story to help build the body of Christ. Does that make sense? Remind yourself the odds are against you when you are closer to God. I said, see, they didn't know. When they shaved Samson's hair and when it hit the ground. Oh, God. When they shaved his hair and when it hit the ground. Y'all got to understand that's groundbreaking. His When his hair hit the ground, okay? They didn't know he was being born again, okay? Because when it hit the ground, you got to understand that 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 new growth, okay? It, it, it regrow just like a, a new fresh head of grass. Okay, when it goes once again out of the ground. Y'all, I saw all of this. Okay, that new growth. Okay, they didn't know he was being born again. A second chance to realize where his power came from. When I saw this, the Holy Spirit led me to this about hair. How the hair is a part of your identity. The cutting of Samson's hair changed his identity, but not who he was. But in this case, you have to look deeper. God made the hair the physical attraction, but it was the allegorical parable of the strength that it gave. Do you hear that? God made the hair the physical attraction, but it was the allegorical parable of the strength that it gave. You have to go through it to see why he hid it. You have to go through it to see why he hid it. He made the focus on the hair to cover the power of the head. The power of the glory and the head of the story and the creator. Okay. When we see here in the flesh, we see ethnicity, the way you look, strength, weakness, how it makes you look younger or older, you know, who you are, growth, how it changes you, how it disguises you, hides you or hides who you are or reveal who you are spiritually. It's the glory, the holiness. It forms the characteristics, okay? And some of us, it may even boost your confidence, right? It enhances physical appearance. Wellness, like, you know, when somebody look at you, they'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, that person looks really, really good. Like, you know, like the great prize. You know, it. <laughs> I remember when I was telling my mom this and I was explaining to her about the hair. She said, yeah, and it, it also protects you from germs, okay? So it makes me think of that too. Like, you know, any hair, on your, even on your body, it, it protects you from germs and bacteria, okay? It tells you apart. Just like Esau and Jacob. Do you remember those twins? Right, okay? It shows stages of your life. It creates boundaries between adults and a child, okay? Because you know how you can grow facial hairs. You know how you can tell when you're getting older, right? Male and female, uh, health and illness. It also, it also shows power and wisdom. It defines a woman in, and oh wait, it defines a woman in a man's eyes, okay? Spiritually, I see how it covers the head person. So when when I saw this hair, y'all. 
I told you, I, I go a little bit deep. And when I see things spiritually, I make sure whatever God gives me, I write it down. So I, I saw it as it covers the head person. It hides the head person, but it reveals the head person, which is God. Okay. God that's in you. Okay. Look, in the past, people has used hair symbolically to humiliate, to humiliate people, right? Don't, don't, don't sometimes you see that too. Like, um, like sometimes people in humiliation, they, they will, uh, cut the hair, right. And, and try to and humiliate people with, with cutting off the hair. Right. Okay. Uh, 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 a, a sacrifice to enable sacrifice. Okay. And it, uh, ter to terrify them endow in it, in, endow strength and even professes love. Okay, because you know how you be trying to be cute and, and, and you're trying to attract somebody with your little hairstyle. You get your little haircut or whatnot. Okay, many men uh, won't, some men won't even want to talk to you. Okay, they won't even want to even talk to a woman if she have short hair or no hair at all. Isn't that something? How they be, they'll talk about you if you don't have no hair, you have short hair and stuff like that. Well, you got to, y'all got to be surprised, you know, it's something how you, you only can see the appearance of a person, but you don't see their heart. You know what I'm saying? You don't know the flaws and everything that people has to go through. You see what I'm saying? I have a story of my own, you know what I mean? But yet people still want to see you look the same way you look when you was like 12 years old, right? Okay. Anywho. Okay. Just, okay. So I said, but you know how, or you have come to realization of who you are in the bed with okay who you done got yourself in the bed with y'all at least i know i can put on here and you still know who i am underneath it all because who you love ain't me but what can satisfy your flesh ain't that something it's just like this sometimes people don't even want to get to know you they just want the, the you know they just want you to look to look good to so they can lay with you but yet they don't want to know the person isn't that something you have to know a person more of their heart and mind, you know, because to me, I'm just like this, man. It, you don't you don't mean nothing to me just because of just your looks alone. You know what I'm saying? What else can we talk about? Do you have any kind of conversation or communication? Can we talk about anything else? Is there anything else that we can talk about? First and foremost, about the Lord. You know, what, what, what other conversation do you got other than you knowing how to lay down with somebody? Okay. You have to learn how to love through the relationship you have with God in order to have the compassion to love somebody else, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. So many people are losing their real self trying to look good for someone who still don't love them. God looks on the heart. And if you love him first, you will find the same love in the person that's going to be for you, okay, that you're looking for. Because lust would not be involved, point blank, period. Is that what y'all say? Period. Uh -huh. See, when you are so deep, they want you to brush, wait, when you are so deep, they want to brush you off and get right on and get right to it. So it won't reveal who they truly are. Okay. And what they are after, but you must hold on to God's unchanging hand because looks can be deceiving. And I'd rather wait for the righteous one that loves me, that loves all of me. I said, through thick and thin you can't see me with your eyes you have to hear me with your heart see samson's eyes being out represent god's having his full attention okay by him having his being able to have his full attention with god right for him for we walk by faith and not by sight. Things are not as though they were. So it was just like he was able to make that connection with God because he wasn't able to concentrate on nothing else but God. You see, his focus, he couldn't focus on anything else because he couldn't see anything else but God now. Okay? Do you know who you are? See, Samson, Samson sinned with his eyes. He sinned with his eyes, right? See, he had to go back to the beginning because that's where he where he first sinned at, right? He sinned with, I mean, was his eyes, all right? He wasn't focused on the Lord or his path, okay? Or where he was going, almost like the streets raised him, okay? His eyes were taken out because he looked up on evil, but in the end, he didn't need eyes to see. He was able to block everything out and make that connection with God 
understanding his power to overcome something man is is so way to overcome i'm sorry i'm running this sentence together okay he was able to block everything out and make that connection with god understanding his power to overcome sometimes men is so powerful but can be ripped apart like a lion because of something so sweet that is on the inside remember that honey okay I wanted to use that that little piece right there just to describe that part in itself or sometime how, you know, how you can be fooled by a person just for going after something you think is sweet. All right. I said, see, Delilah, Delilah hood, hood winked them. OK, into telling her into telling um, her his weakness. OK, this the secret of his strength. But in the end, God restored him, right? God granted Samson, Samson his vengeance through his strength. He restored him uh, just like in the beginning, okay? That new growth from the connection and realization of where his power had came from, the obedience he had, he needed to demolish the Philistines in the end and bring down the temple, okay? The temple of that little God, the little God, Dagon, the father of Baal, the idol the idol God, destroying himself along with the enemy. But it was only the start to saving Israel, right? The fetter, oh yeah, I told y'all what that was. The fetter was the fetter that, because I wrote that down in the um, scripture. It talked about the fetter that was around his uh, legs. That was the shackles that was being broken, okay, from, oh God, okay. Let me say it right, because I know I wrote it real fast and sloppy. Okay, so I used the fetter that was in the story that was holding his legs. That I told y'all was the shackles. And I thought about the shackles that were broken at the end because of, of God was able to break him free by helping him uh, uh, kill the enemy. Okay, kill the enemy or, get, or slew his enemies. Okay, it was a sign of freedom and hope. They called Samson the... the Ravid Raviger, I think Raviger, R A V A G E R, the destroyer. Okay, in Hebrew, in Hebrew, it was known as the destroying angel. Okay, known as Mashid. Okay, an entity sent out by God on several occasions to deal with numerous of peoples. Okay makes me think of the death angel he sent in the story of pharaoh when they had to put that blood you remember that lamb's blood over the door okay they called him the messenger of death okay when samson was buried i saw he they buried him where he grew up the beginning and the end between two cities just like how he was just like how he tore apart that lion okay just like he tore apart the lion, it was just like two nations that were apart, okay? The Israel and the Philistines, okay? Yet something sweet still came out of it, okay? Estro was in the territory, okay? Because I wrote down Estro where he was buried. Was in the territory allotted to the tribe of Dan and located on the border of the tribe of Judah. The city in the plain, that's what it was called, partly in the hill country. And Zorah was a village in the heart of the Judean foothills, the Shepla. Later, it became a fortified city. And I said, you see, Samson was a Nazarite, not a Nazarene. A Nazarene is a person who is consecrated. Okay, wait. Samson was a Nazarite, not a Nazarene. A Nazarite is a person who is consecrated to God. That means dedicated to God, making a vow to God. Because God made him specifically for him. Samson was born for the purpose of God to begin to deliver the Israelites from the hands of the Philistines. Okay. It was God that set things in motion. Okay. It was only the beginning of friend the, the Israelites. And I believe Samson was supernatural. Y'all, I believe Samson was supernatural. I'm sorry. I saw Jesus in the story like I always do. Even when it came to him slewing the enemy with the jawbone of an ass. Y'all, look. I, this is how I saw this, y'all. I'm going to read exactly how I wrote it now. I saw in this section, when it came to the spirit of the Lord coming upon him, the story turned spiritual to me because, see, they used to, they use wait, because 
See, they used to tie those jawbone skin waters bottles to those donkeys. So back in the day, they used to take those those water bottles. You know those water bottles? It almost looked like a jawbone of a donkey, right? Um, so they, they used to tie these jawbone skin water bottles to um to the donkeys, okay, when they were having to travel in the wilderness. And I was thinking he didn't have time to kill that donkey. So he took up, okay, he took up, he took up the Holy Spirit when he raised his hand and kills a thousand of the Philistines. He didn't even know what came over him. He was he was so tired in the flesh when he came out from under the Holy Spirit that he called out to God to not leave him. Don't leave me in the hands of the enemy. See, God said to ask and it shall be given. One sip of me and you won't thirst no more. The place was called Remeth Lehi, means to raise the jaw, elevation of the jawbone to take up. Lehi was the tribe of Manasseh. Lehi was uh, a descendant of Joseph's son, Manasseh, okay, to take up. To fill an amount of space and time and clay, he set him apart with the Holy Spirit. And that was the split and the breakthrough. Speaking of breakthrough, if you don't have Jesus, you will feel empty, fruitless, heartbroken, y'all, and dry like a desert, like wandering around in the wilderness, which brings me to barren y'all that i told y'all was going to talk to you guys about being barren the barrenness and sterile okay so when i read barren tell me why it took me to barren and sterile i didn't know that okay the woman is called barren and the man is called sterile okay just like in the beginning of the story okay i was explaining y'all if you don't have jesus be careful who and what is filling you up spiritually and physically now barren being barren means I'm almost done. Being barren means to 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 produce. Okay, being barren means to to pour. It means poor to produce, too poor to produce. Okay, lifeless, dead, or apparently dead, or I'll say dead as a doorknob, right? Like a rag doll, emotionless. Okay, you know, have you ever seen a person with a fake face and and they be emotionless, that's like just looking like they just dead face? emotionless joyless soulless okay two-dimensional a hater double-minded bland unstable in all they ways okay they hate the word and the truth okay no feelings in their hearts expressionless or uninspired or uninspired ain't that something colorless y'all characterless ain't and <laughs> you ain't yourself okay blank a dull lifeless voice <laughs> okay this is all but this is all what i got out of baron y'all talking loud and ain't saying nothing a whole lot of nothing can't put two and two together dried up unconcerned don't wait don't do no difference okay they don't know they don't know no difference okay they don't care if they're oh they don't care if they coming or going okay no sign of life and they just gone okay that's what i wrote okay make sure y'all too in this end before I, before i go y'all make sure you also help the man because you know what father's day is coming up and when i seen this y'all I'm, I'm telling you i got you know what i was tripping i was tripping off this because this is for my man out here okay it made me understand y'all just a little bit more and it made me want to 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 put this in the end of this because you, you know what we need to, we need to care a little bit more about our men's out there you know because the, the, when i read about storo y'all i was like oh my gosh so anyways the man part just popped up too about the, the man's part being storo says look up i said look up man's infertility symptoms and causes online i saw under this one place called um I think the Mayo or Mayo Clinic, M-A-Y-O Clinic, okay, for information that was very informative to me and shocking. Just trying to see both sides when I looked at Baron in the in the word, I came across this because women is called Baron and male is called Stir. I didn't know much about, about it, but when I saw how many things could simply be the cause, I was shocked. Something as simple as being careful, y'all, is spanking your sons on their behinds, okay, on their bottoms, you know, because... Of they little stuff down there, y'all. 
Oh my goodness, y'all. I'm, I'm telling you. I, I am telling you, y'all. Look. Okay, because it could cause something to go on down there with man. And ain't that something how that's the way that the doctor do you when you first come into this world? Okay, they spank you on your bottom as a baby. Okay, first thing, that's the first thing they do. But, okay, I would say don't spank. I won't spank my child, but don't spank my child. But then how we going? We got to figure out another way how to make the baby cry, huh? I even saw that something as small as they have to let their, I'm saying it, y'all. They have to let their little, you know, testicles, their little balls breathe, okay? Or it could hurt or or put in risk the sperm flow, y'all. Well, I know this is a lot. And I said, I know, I said, wait, I know this is a lot, y'all. Just letting y'all know. But even just eating, even eating the wrong foods, like certain foods, certain surgeries and stuff that y'all may get, you know, drinking alcohol uh certain medications like when y'all have like uh any type of uh, uh or even any type of disease may even or you might even have to be gluten free y'all absolutely no stress at all you know what i'm saying it takes a lot to bring a child in this world because when i was looking at it i was just like wow you know i understand now you know, because at first I used to be like, you know, you know, I used to always think like, why do God be doing this and God be doing that and doing all kinds of different stuff like that. But you know what, y'all, we need to be more sensitive. They need to make some more underwear that's breathable and stuff like that, because I did not know that even something as small like this can 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 put a risk to them having children. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, you know, maybe they need to make some kind of mesh underwears or some type of, you know, they, it, you know, it has to breathe. It, it has to breathe. I, I, I found this out reading, you know, I'm trying to be as clean as possible, but yet I'm still trying to tell how, how serious this is, you know, for, for a man to be able to, to have children on how he has to like take care of, you know, his stuff down there. You know what I mean? He, he has to let them, they have to let them breathe, they let the pair breathe. So sometimes y'all, when y'all be out there and y'all be, you know, uh, working out and doing stuff like that, uh, or you have to go to work and stuff, y'all stop wearing these real, real tight underwears and pants and stuff like that and let them breathe, y'all. That don't mean take them out and, 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 uh, and open and towards somebody. But I'm, I'm saying when you get home, you know, you, you have to let, let the boys breathe okay let 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 it breathe okay i understand now i understand now so you know you don't have to show the world or anything like that but all i'm saying is wear looser clothes let them breathe eat the right foods you know go gluten free you know be be careful of uh, different type of vitamins you might be taking it could cause this to happen you to be in sterile you know any type of, of surgeries if you notice like a, a lump or, or anything like that, or, or, you know, make sure you go to a doctor. You see what I'm saying? Because the doctor can tell you all of these things, but look up that place I told you, you guys, the, the Mayo Clinic. I've seen this online and it was saying so many things that, you know, could be the cause of, of you having a low count or not being able to, to have children and stuff like that. And it's, it's something as small that, that ain't, that may not even be your fault, you know, could be the reason. And also be careful of, of who you allow yourself to sleep with, you know, who, who you, who you messing with, because you could be clean, but if, what if that other person ain't clean? And then by that other person ain't clean, you know, it can cause you to, to not be able to function right. You know what I'm saying? Or let's say you, this person is married, but then, yeah, you said, well, I don't care. You know, I don't, I don't want the responsibility. I just want to do this right now. Well, you know what? That one time could, could mess up you know, the rest of your time and the rest of your chances that you have to have children. So just make sure that you be careful in, in this because I, I wanted to let you know that I saw this, let you man know that I saw this and I really cared about y'all and those out there who don't have children or may want to try to look up and see how to protect yourself and how to keep yourself um, so that way you can be able to have kids, okay? I love y'all. If nobody told you that you was beautiful today, remember that you're beautiful just the way that you are. And, and I love you, okay? So no matter what nobody says about you, y'all, make sure that, look, just be yourself. Be you, baby. Be you. Be you at all times, okay?
Don't 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 change for nobody. Be you. If you just be the flawed person you are, because the only person that really cares about you is Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you that once you can once you can open yourself up to God, then you can see who you truly are. So that way you can be who you are towards the person that God has for you to love. I love y'all. Take care of yourself and talk to you later. All right. Later.